गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन टीचिंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ डिवाइन पब्लिक स्कूल मोहनापुर गोरखपुर वंस अगेन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टुडे वंस अगेन आई एम हियर विद द वीडियो और यू कैन से द पार्ट सेकेंड ऑफ द चैप्टर ई वन स्ट्राइज एंड ओ लेवन रिटर्न बाई कोलिन डेक्स्टर ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्व सब्जेक्ट इंग्लिश कोर फ्रॉम योर बुक विस्तास बोर्ड सी बी एस सी वंस अगेन आई एम हियर विद द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द चैप्टर ऑफ ईवान्स ट्राइज एंड ओ लेवल डियर स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई विल रीड द पैराग्राफ फॉर यू ऑल इन द लिटिल लॉज जस्ट इन साइड द प्रिजेंस मेन गेट्स द रेवरेंड एस मैकलरी साइंड इज नेम नीटली इन द विजिटर्स बुक फ्रॉम देयर ही वॉक साइड बाई साइड विद ए साइलेंट प्रिजन ऑफिसर एक्रॉस द एक्सरसाइज यार्ड टू डू टू डी विंग Here he was greeted by Jackson. The wing's heavy out door was unlocked and locked behind them. The same was done to the heavy in a door. Macleary was now to be looked after by Stephen. Jackson murmured, "If you had got the razor, Stephen nodded." Macleary followed Stephen's to the cell where Evans was kept. Stephen's opened the peep hole and found Evans completely engrossed. in a textbook of elementary german grammar stephens took the key from its ring and the cell lock opened now students i want you to be attentive as i am going to explain the meaning of this paragraph the priest that means macleary whose full name is reverend s macleary who was going to invigilate this examination to be conducted in german language that is o level so the priest macleary signed his name in the visitors book at the gate house he then followed the prison officer through the exercise yard to diving there he was greeted by jackson as i have already told you that jackson is a prison officer the heavy outdoor of the diving was opened and that shut behind them the same happened when they entered through the inner door macleary joined stephens jackson ordered stephens stephens a newly recruited prison officer so jackson ordered stephens to remove the razor from the cell stephen agreed he also told him to keep a close watch that means jackson told stephen to have a close watch on the conduction of the examination so macleary made a vibrating sound while climbing up the stairs following his new guide new guide here is stephen when they reached the entrance of the cell stephen opened the peep hole and informed macleary that he was the person who had to take the exam now evans was sitting quietly facing the door slightly away from the two tables which had already been, already been kept there he was concentrating on the elementary german grammar stephens took one of the keys from the ring and opened the lock is it clear students <clears throat> now moving to the next slide it was 9 10 am the governor instructed jackson to tell evans of the temporary little precaution the governor thought that evans try to take advantage of macleary evans had been got rid of any potential weapon but what about innocent macleary he might bring a jack knife evans might told him hold him a hostage with it the governor phoned jackson who lightly frizzed macleary's clothes then he searched the contents of the suitcase he was puzzled to find a semi inflated rubber ring macleary explained that he suffered from hemorrhoids which he sat down for when he sat down for a long time then he found a paper knife at the bottom of the case very politely he took it away now dear students i want you to be very attentive as i am going to explain the meaning of this paragraph so the lock of the cell made a ringing sound after it sprung up at 9 10 am the governor switched on the receiver of the microphone as he wanted to listen the conversation which is going on 
in the cell. He ordered Jackson to tell Evans to be careful as they had installed a microphone in his cell. He thought that it would be good to forewarn him. He said it in a way as though Evans would never be able to spot it. A thought came to the governor's mind that all this seemed like a theoretical drama and all their preparations were like those done by schoolboys. He thought that how could Evans think of escaping that day because all the precautionary measures has been taken by the governor himself. He could have tried it when he was at the recreational block because it was easier to escape from there. But today he was locked in his cell for giving the examination. All the officers were closely watching him. That means Evans. There were two doors between his cell and the yard. There were walls as high as piles of dry grass. Yes, Evans was totally safe now. Now the governor thought that there will be no problem if he keeps the receiver switched on. Although he knew that there was nothing to listen because it is the duty of the supervisor to maintain silence in the cell. But he was still in a doubt. He was worried. That means the governor was worried about Evans taking undue advantage of McClary. He could have smuggled him to take long bladed hand tool or rope ladder. The governor at once got alert. He thought that means the governor thought that they had taken away all the possible weapons from Evans. But there were chances that McClary could have brought some weapon unknowingly with him such as jackknife which is a large knife with a folding blade. Even Evans could hold him captive for forcing the prison officers to release him. The governor called up someone at 9-12 am. Stephens had already introduced the supervisor that means the invigilator McClary and Evans who had to appear for the exam. Just at that moment Jackson came and asked McClary to come outside for a minute. He explained about the governor's reason for being worried. McClary cooperated with Jackson in the checking process by holding out his arm, arm so that he could be checked. Jackson started checking him very fast. He then found something hard, which McClary said was his reading glasses. To be more sure, he even checked his suitcase. So Jackson checked each envelope and carefully searched everything with his palm. He also went roughly through the Holy Writ and the Church Times. Everything was fine, but there was one thing in the suitcase that was strongly confusing Jackson. Jackson asked McClary, as to why he had brought a half-filled rubber ring, a rubber ring which was not even fit for a small child with 12-inch waist. He asked him whether he was going for a swim. McClary, who till now seemed very friendly, suddenly changed because of the tasteless joke the Jackson had made. So he told him he suffers from hemorrhoids and when he has to sit for a long time, he left his sentence incomplete. Now Jackson felt very awkward but felt sorry for asking him about the rubber ring. He then later on discovered the paper knife in the suitcase and said that he hoped McClary did not mind if he kept that small, uh, the paper knife with him. And he took it away. Is it clear students? Now moving to the next slide. The examination, examination started a bit late. The governor had the voices of the invigilator and the examinee. It was now 9.20. Evans objected to the presence of Stephens as it disturbed his concentration. The governor ordered Jackson to get Stephens out of that cell. Then the examination began. At 9.25, there was a great calm. Now I'm going to explain this paragraph for you all. It was 9.18 a.m. when governor heard their voices again. It was understood that the exam 
will start a little late. McClary queried Evans about having a watch. He answered yes. He said that he will tell him when to start and he will again tell him when only five minutes will be left before the finish of the exam. Now Evans said nothing. McClary gave him instructions about where to write the index number. Now listen very carefully students. McClary gave him instructions about where to write the index number, center number, etc. He quietly followed it. That means Evans quietly followed it. When McClary was about to say start, Evans interrupted him and looked at Stephens. Stephens answered that he has been ordered by Jackson to stay there for the exam. Now Evans complained of not being able to concentrate if someone will be constantly be watching him like this. He also felt sorry for this. Governor called Jackson, that means governor gave a call to Jackson and ordered him to get Stephens out of the cell as he thought they were doing it a bit too much. Now the governor had heard what was talked on the phone between Stephens and Jackson. He heard the door being shut and also heard McClary announcing the beginning of the exam. It was 9.25 a.m. and there was a complete silence. You can say there was a great peace. Is it clear students? Now at 9.40 a.m. the examination board rang through. An assistant secretary informed the governor that there was a correction slip which the dealing hand had forgotten to place in the examination package. The governor put him straight through to Mr. Jackson in D wing. Meanwhile, he checked whether the phone call was fake or some signal or secret message. He dialed the number of the examination board but heard only the scatter bleeps of a line engaged. Two minutes later, the governor heard some whispered communications in the cell. McClary was dictating the correction. The governor had taken German in the sixth form. He remembered all about the agreements of adjectives. Then he received a phone from the magistrate court. They needed a person van and a couple of prison officers for a remand case. Now listen students, the explanation. At 9.40 a.m., the assistant secretary for modern languages called up from the examination board to speak to the governor. The examination had already started about a quarter of an hour ago. He told him that some fool had not placed the correction slip in the examination package. He then tried to seek help from the governor. The receiver assures him of help by directly connecting the call to Mr. Jackson in d -wing. Now, could this be a reason behind his fear? The governor thought. A line of thought came to his mind about the call being a fake one. Call used to share some signal or a secret message. So, governor then cross-checked it by dialing the number of examination board. The governor heard the sound of continuous beep which one hears if the phone is engaged. After a gap of two minutes, he heard some whispers. After a while, he heard McClary giving instruction to the Evans in his heavy Scottish voice. He asked him to stop writing for a while and also instructed him to open page 3 where the correction has to be done. Here he gave him some instruction as to make correction of fourth word. Now listen very carefully student. Here he gave him some instruction as to make corrections of fourth word in 15th line. Is it clear student? Fourth word in 15th line. The governor listened and smiled because he had taken German as a language when he was in the sixth class. He remembered about the adjectives and so did McClary. The minister's pronunciation of the words sounded very impressive to the governor, but he thought there were less chances of Evans being aware of the adjectives. Meanwhile, he received a call from the magistrates. Court. That means civil officer who administer law. There was a need of prison van and some officers as there was a remand case. 
within the next two minutes the governor thought it to be a fake call but then he thought he was thinking too much his imagination was getting out of control now coming to the fourth slide for the first quarter of an hour stephens had duty dutifully peeped through the peephole at intervals of one minute or so and after that every two minutes at 10 20, at 10 45 a.m everything was still all right evans with his pen between his lips sat staring straight in front of him towards the door seeking some inspiration from somewhere opposite him sat mcclary his hair was amateurishly clipped pretty closely to the scalp now dear student i am going to explain this paragraph for the first 15 minutes stephen had looked into the cell through the peephole after a gap of every one minute and then after a gap of two minutes at 10 45 a.m everything seemed normal when he looked through the hole there was no difference and it remained it the same as always evans was always chewing his pen and looking at the front mcclary always seated on his chair a bit tilted on one side with his face partly turned stephens had noticed him earlier that his hair was cut very short near the scalp he was reading the church times through his spectacles and his first finger was under his collar the fingers of the left hand were nicely manicured he was softly touching his black beard now at 10 50 am the second paragraph at 10 50 am the receiver made a short sharp sound the governor realized that he had almost forgotten evans for a minute evans was asking if he could put a blanket around his shoulder as it was a bit chilly there now mcclary told evans to be quick about it at 10 51 am stephen was surprised to see a great blanket wrapped round evans shoulder he frowned slightly he looked at the examinee more closely now listen to the explanation students at 10 50 am the phone rang and after a while the governor found that he had almost forgotten about evans he then heard Ivan seeking permission from the supervisor to wrap a blanket around his shoulder as, of, as he was feeling cold there. McClary allowed him to put on his blanket on his shoulder. At 10.51 a.m. Stephens opened the peephole and was surprised to see Ivan sitting with a blanket on his shoulders. It seemed strange to him and he even thought of reporting this matter to Jackson for this new change he had noticed. He again looked at him and noticed that he once pulled the dirty blanket close to himself. Now Stephens was getting doubtful about Evans. He even thought that he could harm McClary by suffocating him with his blanket. But then he told himself that he should not behave so foolish as there is no sun on the side of the prison not even in summers it is normal that the cell gets chilly so he decided to return back to his every minute check through the peephole is it clear students now thank you for watching and listening this video once again i will be back with the part three thank you students